Today we are painting a background where we will be putting our mandala prints. This whole thing will get color and when it's dry we will print our mandala using radial symmetry. First things first, on the back side of your paper, write your name and your class. We're using liquid watercolor, which is bright, bold colors. We don't need to dilute it, although we can. I like the nice, bright, bold colors. You're welcome to paint in any sort of pattern that you want to, whether you're doing um, a circular pattern, you're doing diagonal lines, kind of doing it in a diamond formation, to stay away from symbols or stay away from words when you're painting it. We're gonna paint all the whole thing. Use your knowledge of color theory so you know how two colors will mix. Remember, it's always a safe bet if you pick two colors that are touching on the rainbow or two colors that are touching on the color wheel. If you end up mixing opposites, we end up getting some strange effects that may not be what you are looking for. Also remember to keep your brush clean in between colors. Before coming over to a printing station, take your foam piece and where the pivot point is, that's where the center of your mandala is, we need to put um, a dot or a star or a heart, something there that will remind you how we are pivoting our foam all the way around to create the mandala. Because if you don't have this in the center every single time, like a clock, um, your design won't look like a mandala. Okay, got something down to protect the table. Our printmaking ink might come in a jar like this or maybe a tube. This is the Dairy Queen Blizzard of the paint world. It's very, very thick and we don't need a lot of it to work. You can use a popsicle stick to scoop out just a little bit. Wipe it on with it's a piece of plexiglass, plastic, cookie sheet, whatever works. Take the popsicle stick back in the ink jar. We'll use a brayer to roll out the ink. When you're rolling out the ink, you'll begin to see some texture forming. This looks like tree bark texture. It's long and grainy, has all these V's running through it. That's not rolled out enough. Keep rolling. We're looking for a basketball, small bumps in our texture. That looks better. It seems very smooth. There's just a few little dimples of ink on there. That's just about right. Now this does dry kind of fast, so we don't want to work really slow or the ink may begin to dry. Also notice my goal wasn't to spread it all over the sheet. I kind of kept it in the middle. When you're ready to ink, be sure that you have uh, your painted watercolor background. If your teacher lets you do a test print first, that's always a good idea. I am just gonna go for it in the demo. Rolling ink on the brayer, roll it on the foam. Ink on the brayer, roll it on the foam. Notice that where you've pushed down, no ink is going. Okay, that looks nice and black. I'm gonna bring over my painted background. I make sure that my pivot point is in the center. We'll pick up our burnisher or printmaking spoon. Two fingers go in the center. Rub, push hard on the back side. We wanna make sure that this side of our burnisher is um, clean and free of ink or it creates too much friction. Really push and rub. Pull your print. Ta-da! 
And we're going to keep doing this three more times. At some point, you may need to add more ink, probably after the second print. Remember to look for that basketball texture in your ink. Roll it on until it is completely coated, but it should not fill in any gaps. If you end up starting to fill up where your pencil had pushed down, you'll need to take it over to the sink and wash it off. Every print you make, make sure that pivot point, that little dot or star on the back, is lined up in the center. Think like a clock. Two fingers in the burnishing spoon. Rub, rub, rub. Hold tight so you don't slide your foam by accident. And on your last print, same process. Check to make sure you have enough ink. It should look nice and dark. Hold and rub with your burnisher. 